Praise the Lord, Bridgeway. I said, praise the Lord, Bridgeway. Welcome to Bridgeway Community Church. And yes, we have issues. What a great video, and everybody needs a little Antonio Pogne in their life. And so let's put our hands together for the Creative Arts Ministry, the Worship Arts Ministry. While we're clapping, we have a pastor whose birthday it is today, and it's Pastor Dr. Jared Sorber, head of Global Mission. So would you put your hands together for Pastor Jared Sorber? Today, we are giving you the State of the Church Address. Every year at this time, halfway through the ministry year, we give a, uh, an update on how we're doing with our vision and our mission. In September, we do a vision kickoff service with a new theme. We tell you our theme, which of this year, it's come home. We have our bracelets, which many of you have uh, as well, and the ministry year ends in June. So right about halfway through the year, we don't tr uh, preach a traditional sermon, but just kind of give you an update to report on how we're doing and let you know uh, the direction we're moving in. So that's today's uh, talk uh, for those of you who might be new here. And the fact that you came out today uh, in the rain, uh, as well as at Owens Mills in Ricerstown, Maryland as well, I just want to thank you for coming into the house of the Lord. I know that it's a, it's a Ravens playoff uh, day as well. And so for those of you who are uh, Ravens fans, congratulations. Let's hope you all do well today. But I guarantee you that people will be at the game, whether it's raining or not. And so for you to say, I'm coming into the house of the Lord, whether it's raining or not, you ought to give your hands, yourselves a great big hand, because that's a football game, but this is the house of the Lord, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and we are building his church in the name of Jesus. So way to go, y'all, way to go. Before I pray, let me also say that next week starts a brand new four-week winter guest speaker series. If you've been around Bridgeway long enough, you know every February I'll bring in four uh, guest speakers that are national, international speakers, relationships of mine that I like to share with you. And so starting next week, we'll have Dr. Chris Williamson from Nashville, Tennessee. He's a friend of Bridgeway, uh, and some of you might know him, others of you won't, but he's an amazing preacher. And then from Long Beach, California, the next week, our, our Latino sister, Pastor Noemi Chavez, she will be here. She will light the place up. You will be glad that you came. The third week is activist for the common man, Shane Claiborne from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's been here a few times. And then we're going to end it the last Sunday of the month with the all-star baseball champion, former New York Nets and New York Yankees, Daryl Strawberry. And what a story he has. So don't miss the next four weeks. I'll be here every weekend to host them, to entertain them, and to uh, introduce them to you. So make sure you're here starting next week and bring your friends as well, okay? All right, y'all ready to get into uh, the State of the Church Address? All right. First of all, turn to somebody and say, hey, thanks for coming to the house of the Lord today. Go ahead. Owens Mills, go ahead and do that. Say, I know everybody's not here, but you came. Go ahead, tell them that. <laughs> so when you see somebody that didn't come, make sure you tell them they lost. <laughs> I mean, not the game. They, well, forget it. Let's pray. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you uh, for uh, waking us up this morning that we could breathe the air, that we could feel the rain, that we could hear the worship and participate in worship as well as in some laughs and some smiles. Thank you for this church. I love it, and I'm so glad to be a part of it. We know you love it as well. So uh, we ask now as we go into this message that you'd inspire us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, friends, we're halfway through the year. Our theme is Come Home. And uh, I gave the message in September about come home, and those two words really are the theme to say, listen, this year, come home to God, come home to church, no questions asked, no judgment. There's no place like home. In fact, just the last two weeks, I did a series called As For Me and My House. And this series was focusing on your own personal walk with Christ as well as the spiritual leadership within your households. Realizing that this earth is not our ultimate home, 
Just before Christmas, I preached a three-week series on God's divine sign language, reminding us that Jesus Christ is coming back. And this earth one day will be destroyed, and those who have died in Christ will rise first, and then those who are left and remain will be caught up in the air to meet with him. If you've not trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now's the time. Today is the day of salvation. In fact, it says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, for he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We are in the time of God's favor where the door to salvation is still open. There will be a day when that door will close and we will spend eternity uh, with God in heaven if we are followers of Jesus. And if we're not followers of Jesus, we will not spend eternity with him. And so the Bible says in Isaiah 55, 6, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And like the father in the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, God is your heavenly father and his arms are wide open and he's ready to receive every sinner that wants to come home. And the Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and all have fallen short of God's glory. It says in Romans 6.23, for the wages or the penalty of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. God doesn't desire that any man would uh, die and be separated from him, but that all would come to repentance, the Bible says. So God is offering you an open door for all of us to come home to him spiritually today. Whether Jew or Gentile, whether uh, male or female, whether younger or older, the door is still open The season of favor is still upon us, and God can still be found. So maybe I should ask right at the beginning of the message, are you saved yet? At home, do you want to be saved? Well, guess what? You can be. Have you come into a relationship with God through placing your faith in Jesus Christ yet? And if not, why not today? We'll give you an opportunity, as we always do, to pray to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior by the end of today's service. In fact, we give that opportunity every single week. Maybe today will be the day that you'll stop running from God and you'll come home. Is there anybody who would like to do that? Maybe even now, right here in the middle of the sermon, before I continue with the State of the Church address. Let's do this. How about we bow for a prayer, and I'll pray the sinner's prayer. And if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, whether you're in your kitchen or in your car, at Owens Mills, Reisterstown campus, here where I stand in Columbia, if you're under the sound of my voice and listening to this on demand, this is a prayer that you can pray to be saved today. You want to do it? You ready? Close your eyes, bow your heads. And pray this prayer after me if you want to be saved. Say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm separated from you. And I don't want to be anymore. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross and rise again from the dead for me. I place my faith in you today. Please forgive me for my sins. Save me today. Make me new. I accept you today, Jesus. Amen and amen. And if you prayed that prayer to receive Christ, there's no magic to it. It's the fact that the Spirit of God moved you, and now you responded to his invitation And the Bible says that you just crossed over from death to life. It's a spiritual reality. If you want someone to help you grow, if you want to share with somebody in church today after the service and say, you know what, I prayed that prayer, or you want to text us at 97,000, just text the word Bridgeway to 97,000. And somebody will get a hold of you and help you to grow in your faith. 
and congratulations. So why don't we give a hand for those that gave their lives to the Lord today, wherever they are in the world. Friends, I did that because you never know the day or the hour where you will breathe your last breath. This couldn't have been more true and real than where I traveled this week and what I experienced. Do you remember just the last couple of sermons I talked about uh, Joshua chapter one and being strong and courageous? Do you remember that? And during the New Year's Eve weekend uh, overnight service, I mentioned it at that time and in the first service of the year. I was reading in Joshua chapter one. And three times in Joshua chapter one, it said, be strong and courageous. In verse six, it said, be strong and courageous. In verse seven, it said, be strong and courageous. And in verse nine, it said, be strong and courageous. But in verse seven, it actually said, be strong and very courageous. And you may remember me telling you that I was doing this devotional, reading this, and then within 30 minutes, God gave me an opportunity to apply that word. And we call this a preparational devotional, where God is speaking to you, uh, and you just don't realize why until something happens later. Well, let me tell you the rest of the story. 30 minutes after that personal Bible study in my little sunroom in a chair, sitting in the corner with my coffee, a call came in inviting me to go to the Middle East, specifically calling me to go to Israel and directly to the Gaza border. Yes, Anderson, God is saying, it is time for you to apply this word from the scriptures. Be strong and courageous. Man, some practical applications stand right before you and so quickly, don't they? I knew I had to say yes, and I did immediately. It was time for me to be strong and very courageous. And for those of you who were here on the night of New Year's Eve, you may have wondered when I was preaching why I felt so resolved and anointed and empowered and emotional all at the same time when teaching about being strong and courageous. This is why Moses is dead and I'm calling you to go forth. And that was deep in my bones. And it all happened that morning and that devotional, and then that phone call to go to Gaza, and then that night I would have to preach. I was so filled up. And that night when I was preaching, I knew that I would be living this out two to three weeks later. Here's the good news. I went last week, and I just returned this weekend safe and sound from Israel and from the border of the Gaza Strip. So I'm real excited. Hey, y'all, I love God. I love my church. And can I tell you, I love the United States of America. (laughs) Ain't nothing like being in the U.S. And I mean, some of you have no idea how difficult it is to live in other countries. And we are surrounded by literally two oceans that protect us geographically. We don't have to live on the borders with so many different uh, factions. And having been to seven countries in the last couple of months, I do not take our country for granted. And I don't think you should either. America may not be perfect, but you ought to be glad that you are living right here. We're blessed to live here. If you follow me on social media, then you already know where I've been this week because I've been sharing some interviews and some images that I won't share this morning at church, but go to at Anderson Speaks on Instagram or Facebook and you can see some things. But the reason I say that is because I know that sometimes the church platform is not the best platform uh, to share certain things. And last Sunday, right after the service, right after the 11 a.m. service, I was transported to the airport with a small team of people to see firsthand the damage and the horror that the Jewish people and other ethnic groups that live within Israel suffered on October the 7th. Hamas came in and terrorized that whole place. Embedded in Gaza near southern Israel, they attacked civilians from 30 different locations simultaneously, all at the same time. And before I share more of this, I I just wanna say that the emotional pain and the trauma and the loss that have come through the hands of these violent extremists is heartbreaking. We were there right at the border and we could hear the bombs going off. One of my teammates says, did you hear that? That's a bomb. 
We asked the person that was hosting us, was that a bomb? Yeah, that's a bomb. Those bombs were being fired off from Israel into Gaza. So there we're standing, and you have innocent civilians dying daily in Gaza because of this war. Friends, God is not pleased with any of this, and this war must end now. And I said it before in a previous sermon that every person who dies in this war, whether Jew or Arab, if they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they'll spend eternity separated separated in, in hell. It doesn't matter whether they're a soldier. It doesn't matter whether they're a terrorist. It doesn't matter whether they're a civilian. When someone dies without Christ, they die without him for eternity. So we've got to pray that this violence will end. And it's a complicated situation, and I'm not going to act like I have the answers to it. But we were sitting in the house of an Orthodox Jewish couple who invited us over. Someone met them on this, uh, made a, reached out, got to meet them for the first time, and then they invited us into their home. And I remember that the woman said, you know, this is so crazy. Where's the Messiah? We're waiting for the Messiah. And the one thing that I have in common with my Jewish brothers that I say to them often when we talk is that we have something in common. We're both waiting on the Messiah. You're just waiting for him to come the first time. I'm waiting for him to come the second time because I believe that he's already come. Now, again, you know, like I said, if you're in church today, I won't show images and stuff, but what I can say to you, because we have kids and we have adults who aren't interested in this stuff, so if you want to know more about our experiences, we can show you some things. A, again, you can go to my social media, at Anderson Speaks, there's some things there, or you can join me next Saturday for a webinar for an hour if you want to break up your day at four to five, one hour, me and the other teammates will have a webinar, and you can join, and you can process it with us. We won't have answers, but we can at least tell you what we experienced, show you some of what we experienced, and help you process some of this, because I know some of you are trying to process this. You know, there's Stand for Israel, and then there, but what about all the civilian Palestinians, and you see all this news coming from so many different angles. So I can tell you, I've been there on the ground. So I'll tell you my experience. It won't be fake news. It'll just be through my perspective of having been there on the ground. So if you want to join us for that, um, again, that'll be at 4 o'clock uh, next Saturday. But I, listen, I'll take you right to the Nova Music Festival, because I was on the site where there was a music festival, and my son's a DJ for music festivals, and a bunch of kids his age. I call them kids. I know they're all in their 20s, but they're somebody's child. 364 of them were slaughtered and murdered. So think of a field with 364 bodies on a field. I'll take you to the Israeli border of a town called Sterat, a town of 35,000 people where innocent people had people break into their homes, brutally killed them and attacked them. And the heroic efforts of a guy named Jonathan, who's a paramedic, who spent uh, hours with us to show us what he experienced. Right now, as Christian believers, I believe God's calling all of us, all of us, to advocate for life, all life. Advocate for civilian lives in Gaza. Stand firm with Israel in their mourning and in the devastating grief that they're experiencing. Everybody in Israel knows somebody who's either been killed, it's a small, small country, it's been killed, or is a hostage, or have been affected by this. As I think about the eight sayings of a gracist, two of them come to mind. One, I will stand with you. And two, I will heal with you. And how do those work together? It's complicated. And this is where we need the Holy Spirit to help us and to show us. And I don't know what all of this means and how we can somehow fix it all because I guess we're not the fixers, are we? But as believers, we have to be committed to showing up however, wherever, whenever we can. 
And as an ambassador of reconciliation, I tried to do that on your behalf. I tried to do that on behalf of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the God Almighty. And I believe people were so encouraged that we were there. People were so blessed that we just showed up. If you want to join us again, just go to bridgeway.cc slash events. And that way you can register for the webinar if you want to join. Now, what I did do is I did a little video greeting from one of the pastors there. His name is Pastor Stephen Corey. He's an Arab Christian pastor. He has multiple ministries in Bethlehem and Israel. And I asked Pastor Stephen, I said, do you want to holler at my people? Can you just let them know, uh, you know, right from the ground here, a sweet hello from Jesus? He said, Pastor, I'd love to do that. So turn your attention to the screens and listen to Pastor Stephen. Shalom and salam, Bridgeway family. Greetings from uh, Jerusalem, the city of the king. My name is Pastor Stephen Curry. I was born in Jerusalem and I grew up in the city of Bethlehem. I'm spending time here with your amazing pastor, Dr. David. Uh, I love his heart. Uh, we need more people like him, more people like you to come visit the land. Uh, I want to ask you to continue to pray. To don't, don't give up your faith for Christ. Stand your ground. Uh, hold on to the faith and to the joy that Christ has given to us. Let's get back to our first love. When you pray for Israel, pray for the both the Jew and the Arab. Pray for the Palestinians and the Palestinian side. Pray for the peace of the hearts of the Jewish side. Uh, and pray for salvation. Let's pray for revival. Uh, may God bless you, strengthen you, and don't give up. Stay strong. Hang on to the promises that God has. And I look forward to possibly seeing you sometime in the next months in the USA. God, God bless you and a blessed year to you. God has some great people on the ground right there, our brothers and sisters. So keep praying for Israel, praying for uh, Gaza, the Palestinians. Keep them in your prayers, okay? Now, I want to give you an update on our Bridgeway trip to the Holy Land. You may remember in September, I invited you to uh, go with me to either Nigeria or uh, to Israel, and many of you signed up to go to Israel. That trip was supposed to be March of 2024, just uh, a couple of months from here. I need you to know, we will not be going at that time um, because I want to make sure that we're wise. So even though me and uh, my team were right there visiting the holy sites in Israel without any problems, I know that some of you and your families may be uncomfortable going to Israel at this time. So to be wise, we're postponing the trip until next March 2025 or sometime next spring. The exact dates will work with the touring company and the airlines. Uh, some of you gave a deposit, and we'll put that deposit that you gave toward the trip for next year. We can't return the deposit right now because we actually uh, use that for the airlines. And unless the airlines cancel the trip, they won't refund your money. They just apply it to an alternate flight. And for those of you who fly often, you understand how that works. Now, whether you're, you're home in the Middle East or in Africa or in Asia or in Europe or right here in America, home should be that place of safety and rest and nurture and family togetherness. And this is not the case for those who are in Gaza or Israel right now. So what I want to do now is I just want to say a pause for prayer, uh, and then I'm going to give you some more reporting on where we are as a church. But I want to pray right now for the Middle East. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to pray. So if you'll just take a 30 seconds or, an, or a minute in silence, whether you're at home or, or whether you're at Owens Mills, it, you know, Silence sometimes can be uncomfortable, but just for a moment, if you could talk to God, and then I will pray, and then we'll keep going. Does that sound okay? Okay, let's pray together. O oh, Prince of Peace, please allow your presence to be made manifest in the Middle East for that mother right now that's lost her son on the streets of Gaza, for that mother who's crying out for her soldier that is in Gaza, for those families who are grieving the loss of their dearest loved ones. 
Please be merciful, God. Please bring your peace. Please end this war. We pray all this. Oh, and protect especially our Christian brothers and sisters who are over there as well, whether Arab, whether Jewish. In Jesus' name we pray. Together everyone said amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. So in September in the vision message, we came from Acts chapter 2. That's on our wristbands as well uh, for the first century church. And it says that they devoted themselves to four things. Do you all remember the four things that the first century church devoted themselves to in Acts chapter 2, verse 42? Prayer was one. Anything else? Fellowship. The apostles' teaching. So let's, let's read the passage. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, I heard someone say that, and to prayer, right? Those four things, breaking of bread and fellowship. But then it goes on to say in our key verses, verse 46, where it says, and every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. Here it is. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Bridgeway, let's continue to invite people to come home. Let's continue to break bread together with glad and sincere hearts. And many of you have been returning home to God, and you've been returning home to church. Many of you have been been becoming more serious about your walk with the Lord and reviving your relationship with God. And many of you have taken your discipleship into your own hands by attending our Wednesday Night Alive classes under the leadership of Pastor Sandy Pope, joining our small group Bible studies under the leadership of Pastor Will Easton and attending Bridgeway Student Ministries under the leadership of Minister Juan Delgado and Cody Michener, and even having our children engaged in Bridge Kids under the leadership of Ms. Tia Barnes. And you even have groups that are meeting throughout the week, like Pastor Michener's group called the Fellowship Men's Group. It's got 35 men meeting every Wednesday virtually from eight different states and three different countries. And check this out, y'all, the men's breakfast just yesterday, over 125 men at the men's breakfast worshiping God. Gotta love that. Under the leadership of Larry Beverly and Emery Nelson, covered by Pastor Gary Coiro, it's great to see men worshiping and learning together. And uh, in fact, when we're talking about fellowship next week at the Owens Mills campus, after the service, they're going to have free pizza. Talk about fellowship and talk about the price. Free and pizza. I love America. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? Thank you, Pastor Mitch, Pastor Steve Hartnett, uh, Brenda Hartnett, all of the servants, the leaders, the volunteers at Owens Mills campus. I'm proud of you. Many of you are becoming new partners. The last partners download had over 60 people wanting to know what does it mean to be a partner at Bridgeway. We even have our new virtual partnership program. So for those of you like you, Dominic, and and Florida, and so many others of you, go ahead and become a a virtual partner. And there's going to be another partnership download in March. So go to bridgeway.cc slash events and look for that as well. Now what I want to do is I want to give you a few numbers to underscore my point regarding our growth as a church. For instance, our overall attendance at the 11 a.m. service in Columbia is up 40%. Our 9 a.m. service is remaining steady in its attendance, and our overall attendance at the Owens Mills Ricestown campus is remaining steady with about a 3% gain. Bridge kids at both campuses and online have been on the increase. Now we just need more volunteers to serve in Bridge Kids, and there are many different ways you can serve. And so make sure you look for Miss Tia Barnes and ask her, is there anything I can do once a month or something that I can do that could be a support to Bridge Kids? I think that would be so meaningful to them, and it will help us as we grow as a church. 
But our partnership interest has increased. Many of you going to the downloads, now you gotta close the deal and go ahead and become a partner. Do what you need to do, whether it's get baptized or, or whatever the requirements are. Make sure that you do that so we can close the deal on that. But we're growing and there's a lot of activity and engagement in a positive way. In fact, we have had over 330 care ministry requests just since September. We was talking about people who need hospital visits or counseling or meals because they're sick. All of this under the leadership of Pastor William Jen and our care department. Over 330 people needed care from September to now, January. And guess what, Bridgeway? We have the capacity to do it. That's what's cool, right? You need a meal, someone's gonna cook a meal or make sure a meal's provided. You have a family member in the hospital, we have Bridgeway caregivers to help with that. This is what the church is supposed to be about. It's not just the pastor showing up, it's not just the clergy showing up, it's us equipping you so you'll be the disciples to show up. And I'm so proud of you for being this kind of church. And guess what, some of you have fallen on hard times and you needed benevolence from the church. In other words, you need money. You needed to pay a bill or something. Well, guess what? We've given over $16,000 away since September just to help people with their electric bills or their hardship needs. And all this is under the leadership, has been under the leadership of Chris Walls and Steve Maruka. And now I'm happy that Sharon Aluga is going to be joining, overseeing how we distribute those funds. We give priority to our partners. You need to know that. Everybody calls and needs some help, but priority goes for our partners, and we're still going to try to help other people as well, and we do. But we don't do continual help just because someone calls and says that I have an electric bill. We want to ask you, how can we serve you, and why are you in this situation, and can we give you some financial counseling to help that you're not in the situation uh, again. And so if somebody's like, nope, I just want the money. It's like, you know what, then you need to go somewhere else. We're, we're not a bank and we're not a, a money dispersing machine. But if you really want help, then go through the process that we have established to help you. And if you're a partner, you're going to get priority because we know that you've partnered with us and we know that you've walked with us and now you found yourself in a hard situation. We want to help you. And while we may not give you the money directly, you give us that bill, you let us pay your rent. This is what our church does. And I'm so proud of you because of your generosity. Now, the generosity that goes out to everybody is stuff that happens all the time in this church. For instance, the last couple of weeks, I don't remember exactly when, we had people come to the front at Owens Mills, Maryland, who wanted to give, but they didn't have the money to give. And people came to the front, and you went down to the altar, and you blessed them. In the 9 o'clock service here, we had a couple of guys come down to the front, and you blessed them. At the 11 o'clock service, we had a guy come down to the front. God called him out of a crowd and blessed him. What you don't know is that gentleman we found out later had his eviction notice in his pocket. And he brought it to church on a giving Sunday, not knowing that God was going to see him and call him out of a crowd. Guess what? He got three and a half months worth of rent paid because of your generosity. You don't have to be a partner to be touched by God. Just being in the house of the Lord can give you the encouragement that you need. Not to mention our community cupboard. Since September, we have fed over 5,254 people. 55,000 pounds of food, two-thirds of which is for Owens Mills. That's where the need is even greater. But think about that. Since September... We fed 5,000 people who walked away with free groceries. You don't have to be a partner for that. You just got to show up. That's the kind of generosity that you give at this church. And I just want to say how proud I am of you, Bridgeway. Thank you for trusting this ministry. And thank you for being participants in this ministry. Thank you for not taking our leadership for granted. Thank you for not taking our stewardship for granted. Thank you for being a part of what it means to not just come home, but to be home and to be the church. You rock. You're awesome. I love you. And I'm glad to be the pastor of Bridgeway Community Church. <laughs> many of you, <clears throat> many of you have been putting your money where your faith is. 
I know we still have three days left before the first fruits link is down. So at uh, January the 31st, is that what, Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever, it goes away. So if you still want to give your first fruits, you can. But the first fruits offering is that offering we just give to the Lord above our tithes uh, and say, here, God, thank you for last year. Thank you in advance for this coming year. It's something we never did before until last year. And we did it last year because God was telling us to do it, and we weren't given no guilt over this. The guilt offerings are Old Testament. It was no guilt. Give what you want if you can. If you can't, you know, that's all right. <laughs> Some people couldn't do it, and they ended up with money walking out of this church. So you can see that it's not about us trying to get your money. It's really about you giving to God. And we didn't have an amount. We didn't have a, a goal. We didn't have a capital campaign. We just gave you an opportunity. And I want to report to you that over a thousand people have participated as givers in the first fruits offering this month. Over a thousand people. In fact, 1,029 to be exact. And the amount given so far, $594,824.64. That's basically $600 thousand dollars. It's ironic that in one of the services, I don't remember which one I was preaching, where I told you that somebody gave $60,000 because evidently they got 600000 or something, so they gave $60,000. And I don't know why I said this, but I said, how many of y'all would give $60,000 if God blessed you with $600,000? And a bunch of you raised your hand in one of the services, and I said, is that a commitment? And people said, yes, that's a commitment. God bless me with $600,000. I'm going to give the first 60 to him. And it's just ironic now that the amount of money that has been given is $600,000. So I just think that that's ironic, isn't it? I'm just blown away. And uh, again, three more days if you want to go to bridgeway.cc and give. But this is the state of our church, Bridgeway. This is the state of our church. If I were to use one word to describe the state of our church today, I would land on this one word vibrant, vibrant. Bridgeway is a vibrant church. We already know that we're not perfect. And we know that there's always more work for us to do on ourselves to be better. And we'll always have people who are more than willing to, to, to remind us of our shortcomings. But friends, we are a vibrant church. We are a vibrant people. Bridgeway is alive and well, alive and grateful. And can I tell you a little secret? Anybody want to know a little secret? Owens Mills, anybody want to know a little secret? Okay, I'm going to tell you all a little secret. If all goes well, Bridgeway will pay off the mortgage for this original campus in Columbia, Maryland this spring. Paid off. Paid off. That's a 30-year mortgage of $10 million paid in 15 years. You see, we took out the mortgage in 2009 for $10 million. Now it's the spring of 2024, and the original campus will be completely debt-free. That's amazing. And on top of that, five and a half years ago, God led us to purchase a campus in Owens Mills, Reisterstown. And, you know, here we're on Red Branch Road in Columbia. There, they're on Red Run Road in, in Owens Mills. I'm like, well, what's the color red have to do with it? All I can think of is the blood of the lamb, you know. People are going to get saved up in these joints, but I'm like... Thank you, Lord. And so guess what? We felt led to do it. It was $4.5 million to buy that campus. And right now, we owe $2.5 million. So out of $4.5 million, we've paid off $2 million of it. We owe $2.5 million. Now, the elders and the CFO, Tim Samuel, COO, Frank Eastham, have all approved a plan to pay another $500,000 on that debt this July. So that means we'll only have $2 million left before we pay off completely the Owens Mills campus. I think that's pretty amazing. Now, yeah, you can give God a hand for that. 
I know everybody doesn't do numbers, but if I could put it another way, in order to occupy both campuses, we had to borrow a total of $15 million. As of this summer, we will only have $2 million left to pay. Does that make sense? Wow, Bridgeway. Just wow. Just wow. Namdi, I know this blesses your heart, right? Marvin, I know this blesses your heart. Pastor Mitch, I know this blesses your heart. And I want to honor our history a little bit because some of you weren't here and you don't, don't know. But I tried to get 12 banks to give us a loan so we could renovate this building when we moved in in 2006. But they wouldn't give us the loan because we didn't own the building. We had to lease it with the option to purchase it in 2009 when it became available. But in order for us to occupy it, we had to turn it into this beautiful theater. And we needed millions of dollars to do it. And like 12 banks, I believe, turned us down. But one bank took a chance on us. And guess what they said? They said, if you can get people in your church to put the equity in their homes on the line, as collateral for the church, then we'll give you a loan. I'm like, are you kidding me? So you want me to go ask somebody if they have a $500,000 mortgage and they've paid off $300,000 and they still have, and they have like $200,000 in equity. Did I do the math right? Could you please give me your $200,000 in equity? Like, so if the church defaults, they take your $200,000. But if the church doesn't default in three years, you can have it back. How many of y'all would would do that right now? Don't raise your hand because I'm going to ask you if that's a commitment just in case. Just in case it happens. Guess what? Several families did it. Amber and I were the first ones in. We were the last ones out. We didn't have a lot, but we tied up whatever equity we had. And we added all the different equities up until we got enough for the bank to say, yes, we'll give you the loan. I remember, I mean, you probably don't remember this history, but 2008 wasn't a pretty year. We did this in 2006, and it would be held to 2009 when we then tried to purchase the building. So when the 2008 crash hit, there were people like, yo, can I get my equity back? I'm like, I am so sorry. It's legally tied up. There's nothing I can do about it. But I promise you, Amber and I will be the last one out. You'll be the first one out. You just got to hold on. And they held on. They held on. And God, all, all of us got out. So nobody lost their equity. Amber and I, we didn't lose any of our equity. So can you imagine, though, that people tied up their personal equity for God's church? That's the history. And while I want to honor history, I also want to thank you for helping us make history. Because wherever you come along the way, you're helping us make history. And every gift that you give helps this amazing ministry for us to do the work that God's called us to do at home and abroad. Bridgeway, you are vibrant. So vibrant. I want to end with a letter that I want to read because I want you to know what God is doing all over. And not just in Columbia, Maryland, but how about this place? Miamisburg, Ohio. Has anybody ever heard of Miamisburg, Ohio? A couple of you, may, oh, one, there you go, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Anybody that Owen smells? <laughs> well, so this lady writes me this letter, and if you'll allow me time to read it, then uh, we'll be done, okay? And uh, here it is. We'll call her Jane Doe. Is that good? Dear Dr. Anderson, I recognize that you have great demands on your time, yet I am hoping you will take a minute to read my letter. I am enclosing a check for $3,000 for you to put where you feel it's most needed. I would like to explain why. You see, my husband of 41 years was a pastor in the American Baptist Church's USA. He served faithfully for 35 years in Buckris, Ohio, I probably said that wrong, and 25 years in Dayton, Ohio. He retired in January of 2020 six weeks before COVID shackled the world. We found you online because of our familiarity with your book, Letters Across the Divide, which he used as a book study in our congregation. You see, multicultural ministry was, a heartbeat, was our heartbeat as well. 
We found great encouragement and direction in your messages and listened every Sunday during the time the nation was shut down. We resonated with your intentionality, multicultural philosophy of the church and ministry. Your sermons were on point for us both to an uncanny degree, even addressing some of our family issues as if you knew what was going on. During that time, June 2020 through April 2022, I believe my husband regularly sent part of our tithe money to Bridgeway. On April 15th, 2022, he died quite suddenly. We had just returned from a lovely beach vacation. We took a walk in the morning, enjoyed being back in our home after a week away, when in the evening, he suddenly looked gray and clammy. He did not want me to call 911, but did allow me to drive him to the hospital. On the way there, he seized in the car. I frantically called 911, pulled over, and gave him chest compressions until the medics came, but it was too late. The hospital gave him three crash carts of meds and shocked his heart 16 times. He did not make it. Ironically, this was Good Friday, and I administered chest compression in a Presbyterian church parking lot. After 41 years of growing up together, loving and learning life together, and enjoying soul companionship, S-O-U-L, soul companionship, I was and remain shattered. I am carrying on by the grace of God, processing my grief, teaching fourth graders at public school, attending to my own grown children, and generally picking up the pieces of my broken heart. Bridgeway has been a rock for me through this time. Your sermons continue to be highly relevant. I have not tithed since my husband died. Please accept this tithe as a heartfelt thank you for your ministry and your uncanny ability to speak strongly into lives you do not even know. You remain in my prayers, Jane Doe, from Miamisburg, Ohio. What a letter, what an impact we're having. Even people who find us in COVID and who are watching us online, and for them to write a check from a place I never even heard of, our ministry is making a difference. We're vibrant in person. If you can make it here, get here. But we're also vibrant online, so Bridgeway. Come home to God. Come home to church. The water is warm. The spirit is vibrant. No questions asked. No judgment. Just come home. And all of Bridgeway said amen, amen, amen and amen. God bless you, Bridgeway.